Police are looking for clues in the death of a girl overnight found in a stolen car. What they have to go off of so far still ahead. Plus, the DEA sending a message to parents about the hidden meaning behind certain emojis and how to keep your kids safe from drugs. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting off humid again, and we are already at 80 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, May 10th. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about all the humidity in the air in just a minute, but we're going to check first with Stephen Cavazos had some problems. Hi, Stephen. Yeah, uh, Mark, Stephanie, we told you about this issue at 630 during GMSA in the early edition, but 35 at South Cross doesn't look like it's getting any better. Let's go ahead and get a closer look with TransGuide. You can see that traffic right now is down to just one lane. Earlier, Textile was reporting that there was a closure in this particular spot, but it does look like they have reopened at least that one portion there with that one lane as traffic is getting by, but it is not looking good. We are already starting to see a lot of red on the screen. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map because where that crash is pinpointed is the northbound lanes of 35 there near South Cross. Keep in mind, we've been seeing this throughout the entire morning, so uh, hopefully we'll see first responders wrapping pretty soon, but let's get a wide look and see how right now things are shaping up at 859. No big issues to report. We do have a stall and it does look like another crash may have popped up there along 35 near Caesar Travis. We'll find out what's going on there, but for those travel times, uh, let's take a look there because right now if you are traveling traveling in from Lytle on 35, you can expect a 25 minute delay. It's not too bad, but this has been going from yellow to red, so we're going to have to watch it closely. Maybe look for an alternative route if you have to head out through this direction in the next few minutes. But 35 at South Cross, one last look from TransGuide. We'll be working to bring you more updates right here on GMSA at 9. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. An investigation is underway after a girl was found dead in the back seat of a stolen car on the southwest side overnight. Officers responded to the area near Warhurst Drive for shots fired, and that's when they found the girl. Right now, there are no suspects in that case. The victim has not been identified. A chaotic scene in the parking lot of a northwest side shopping center overnight. Shots were fired between people in two vehicles hitting a sports bar nearby. A man not involved in the shooting was hit by a bullet and died. The people in the two vehicles took off. Police are looking at surveillance videos. They search for the suspects. A mother and her boyfriend facing 13 counts of assault in the death of a five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. The little girl was unresponsive when her mother took her to the hospital back in February. And she later died. Katrina Mendoza and Jose Ruiz are both being charged with her death. If they are found guilty, they could face five to 99 years or life in prison. Northside ISD officials are defending their actions after Governor Greg Abbott indicated the district would be investigated after allegations staff felt pressured to vote in Saturday's bond election. The district said the message sent out was, quote, miscommunication and that encouraging voter participation in all elections has been a consistent message expressed by their superintendent, end quote. You can read the district's full statement online. The safety of Supreme Court justices is a top priority. The Senate unanimously passed a bill granting high-level security for all nine Supreme Court justices and their families. This comes as abortion rights protests grow outside court members' homes. All this stemming from last week's leak of the court's draft opinion indicating Roe v. Wade could soon be returned. The fugitive couple from Alabama on the run for 11 days finally captured. Murder suspect Casey White will now be transferred back to Alabama to face new charges related to his escape. Corrections officer Vicki White has died after shooting herself in the head after the dude tried to escape from U.S. Marshals in Indiana. An autopsy is expected to be done today. The FDA says the authorization of COVID vaccines for children younger than five years old could come sooner than the target date of late June. The spokesman says the process has taken longer than expected because it's a complex task compared to others and because it's for small children. He says they're under a strong microscope. Stock futures overnight pointing to a higher open on Wall Street after a tough Monday. The Nasdaq dropped 4.3%. The S&P ended Monday 3.2% lower and the Dow closed down 2%. Worries about inflation, rising interest rates, lockdowns in China and Russia's invasion of Ukraine are all messing with the markets. Your money could be making more money if your tax refund is delayed. The interest rate the IRS has to pay if it takes too long to get your refund has now jumped to 4% for individuals. Last year, those interest payments cost the government $3.3 billion. And that's today's 9 at 9. 
outside with live cam about 80 degrees at San Antonio International. Just a few broken clouds here or there. Another warm day on tap. What's happening right now, Justin? It is so warm out there and the temperatures just not did not cool down much at all this morning. It's going to be another hot day as you might imagine this stretch of heat continues into much of this week. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just the way it's playing out. 80 degrees right now. Dew point is at 73. We've got southeast Julie winds a little bit gusty this morning, about 13 miles per hour. Forecast for today, we should make it up to about 95 or so. Clouds will clear. We'll get mostly sunny skies so later this afternoon. Those southeast Julie winds will stay breezy 10 to 15 <coughs> miles per hour. Uh, let's look at the satellite picture and you can see where all the clouds are. Quite a bit of uh, cloud cover this morning. But we are starting to see a few breaks here and there. 82 degrees, Hondo, 81 Pleasanton, 76 Seguin, 79 right now in New Braunfels. And there is a heat index. Feels like 84 here in town already. Heat index will be up near 100 today. So be aware of that. Pollen count, it's just molds. We're getting out of tree season here. So it uh, likely will just be molds from uh, here on out as we head into the summer. Uh, and the forecast for today again takes us up into the mid 90s. We're going to talk more about any sort of rain chances. There's, there's a couple sprinkled in the seven day forecast, but not much. We'll have more on that here in just a couple minutes, guys. Justin, thank you. And your morning headlines an update on those deaths at a resort in the Bahamas and Lake Mead outside Vegas has some tourists feeling a little skeptical about their vacations. Plus another hero from Ukraine, Ukraine. This time it's man's best friend and a teenage lawyer. David Sears is here with all these stories. Good morning. Morning. So I want you to think about what you were doing when you were 19. You're in college, okay. mm -hmm. probably all of us in college, right? Yes. Justin, were you in college? Yeah. When you, no, were you were, when you were 19, 19? When you <laughs> it were doesn't matter the year. Yes. What were you doing when you were, I think. <laughs> what year? He was getting ready to make fun of us. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, okay. Think about that. We'll get to that in just a second. First, let's start with this. On a serious note, the death of three tourists at Sandals Resort in the Bahamas has investigators baffled as they look for answers. The three victims have been identified. Two of the victims, Michael and Robbie Phillips. They're from Tennessee, where they ran a travel agency and specialized in Sandals Resorts. They were found in a beachside villa. The other victim, Vincent Shirella, died in an adjacent villa. He was with his wife celebrating their anniversary. She was also ill, but she was airlifted to a hospital outside of Miami. Her son says she has swollen legs and arms and she couldn't move. According to investigators, all four victims reported feeling sick the night before. Two went to a health care facility. They were complaining of nausea and vomiting. The doctors recommended two of them be airlifted off the island. They refused. The dead couple showed signs of convulsions when they were found. Forensic samples have been taken and sent to Philadelphia for testing. The famous Lake Mead, just outside of Las Vegas, is a destination for tourists and locals. It's a recreation hotspot, but now it's being revealed as a burial ground. With this water level so low and continuing to fall, the lake has given up two bodies over the last week, one stuffed in a barrel. Las Vegas police believe one of the bodies was a murder victim from the 70s or 80s. They came to that conclusion from the clothes the victim was wearing, and it sounds like it could have been a mob hit. According to the Mob Museum, putting a body in a barrel and dumping it in the lake, signature of the mob. It is believed that as the water level continues to drop, there will be more bodies found, and there will be those of boating accident victims or just drowning victims. Whatever the reason, it has some tourists a little spooked. I think I want to leave. It wouldn't have been something I would have expected. Second guess bringing your kids out here anymore and to actually see everything that's washing up. The lake level has dropped over 170 feet since 1983, but it is still over 530 feet deep. Man's best friend, a Ukrainian hero today, meet Patron, a two year old, year, a two and a half year old. Jack Russell Terrier Patron has been helping Ukrainian troops clear bombs. The dog has been searching for explosives left behind by the Russians. He has helped Ukrainian troops locate 236 explosives so far. Because of those heroic acts, President Zelensky presented the Medal for Military Service to Patron and one for his handler. A ceremony took place last night in Kyiv. And finally, meet Ethan Zumanski. He has graduated from the South Texas College of Law with a jurist doctorate degree. And you say, ah, so what? People graduate all the time. Ha <laughs> ha, but at 19, don't think so. According to Ethan's mom, he's the youngest to get that degree from that law school and pass the bar. Once again, he's only 19. Started college when he was 12. 
If you're willing and you put your mind to it, you can pretty much do anything. He's an amazing human being, not just academically, but spiritually, emotionally, he has a kind, pure heart. Some people were like, I, I didn't even know if this was legal. It is. Ethan's dad, by the way, is a preacher at a church in the Woodlands that's outside of Houston. Ethan also finds time to deliver the Lord's message even while he was going to law school. He has a federal judicial clerkship lined up for 2024. Wow. He says he wants to be an advocate for young people. Way to go, Ethan. Go. 19 Whoa. years old. Wow. Got a law degree, passed the bar, ready to practice law. And we were doing what? At Not 19, that. nothing even close to that. <laughs> Not that. That kid is wise beyond his years. Yeah. I think I was trying to figure out how to get out of the finals, but that didn't David. work. David. Well, you think about it, May, right, right about now. Right about now, we were, right? yeah, we were in the. We, we were, were studying we for were. the finals. We were. up all night right. going, yes. man. Right. Studying for yeah, the finals. Yeah, that was it. That's what all, I told my All parents, nighters. Anyway. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thanks, oh David. my gosh, thank you. 908, about 80 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. How one couple is receiving a lot of backlash and even a visit from Child Protective Services after having their young son run a marathon with them. And a warning for parents watching right now, emojis may be cute, but they could have hidden meanings behind them. What parents should be on the lookout for to keep kids safe from narcotics when we come back. Welcome back. Emojis are a popular way to share emotions in picture form, right? Well, some seemingly innocent emojis are actually code for drugs. These coded messages are popular among teenagers searching online for drugs to buy. ABC's Karen Travers explains what parents need to look out for. Emojis. We use them every day in our text messages and social media posts. But kids often have their own meanings for these symbols that go right over adults' heads. The Drug Enforcement Administration is warning parents that teens are using emojis as code to buy drugs from sellers online. So what you might see is an electrical plug followed by a school bus. What in the world would that be? Uh, that would be someone looking for a source for a Xanax pill. Bill Bodner, special agent in charge at the Los Angeles DEA office, says the trend became more prevalent during the pandemic. Drug transactions shifted from bars and nightclubs to online. Our fear was, especially to parents, parents might see a lot of these emojis and really think nothing of them. They look so innocent and it could be something indicative of uh, an attempt to buy drugs. Bodner's biggest concern, counterfeit pills. All the pills you're going to buy now on social media or on the street are counterfeit prescription drugs. They're not the real thing. Bodner says the active ingredient in many of the counterfeit pills is fentanyl. It's a drug that's 50 times more powerful than heroin. We're seeing it everywhere. Um, we've made counterfeit pill seizures, fentanyl pill seizures in every state in the United States. It's impacting every community. Bodner stresses that parents need to have conversations with their kids about the implicit danger of these pills. The dosing is very inconsistent consistent and it could just be one pill that causes an overdose death. Parents who think their teen might be using drugs should look out for changes in behavior. You can find helpful resources at DEA.gov slash one pill. A great place to start to educate yourself if you're a parent about what's out there and about how to have the conversation with your child. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. And taking a look outside with live cam. Still humid out there, although I'm hearing that it's not going to be as hot tomorrow. It was yesterday. Not as hot, right? but I mean, it's still going to feel. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to be hopeful here. Hands. I appreciate that. Yeah. And Steph, you're always positive, and I love that. Thank I you. do. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, May has been <laughs> a rough month so far. Uh, let's take a look at the average here. Uh, we're talking about the month of May. Now, look, we're only 10 days in. This, this will probably change some, but we are 8.3 degrees above average, and we uh, hit 101 May 7th and May 8th couple records there on the 7th and the 9th and pro we're projecting to be above average. Our average high, by the way, is 85. So we're projecting to be above average all the way into the weekend and quite honestly, probably into next week. Now, if May were to end today, this would be the warmest or tie the warmest May on record. So just give you some perspective there. It has been a hot start. And as we look at the time lapse, it was a warm morning. We had a lot of cloud cover, a lot of gusty winds and a lot of humidity and that tends to keep temperatures up. So we're sitting at 80 degrees right now. Southeasterly winds at about 13. Dew point is at 73 and that humidity is going to fall off some this afternoon. We've got dew points that are really elevated right now, but I think as we get into the afternoon hours, you'll see those dew points drop off into the mid 60s, perhaps still humid and there certainly is still enough humidity there to create a heat index today. Satellite picture shows our typical morning cloud deck is in place. 
it uh, it's fairly thick over San Antonio right now. But these clouds will break up and we're starting to see some breaks out near Hondo Kerrville. Sun's trying to pop out even here in Bear County. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a few peaks of sun here within the hour. 79 Helotus, 80 Port SA, 83 Stinson, 77 right now Canyon Lake, 79 in New Braunfels. And this is the forecast heat index, not the air temperature, but this is the forecast heat index for today. As uh, we head towards noontime, it'll feel like 93 outside when you factor in that humidity and the heat index will probably be around 99 close to 100 here in San Antonio this afternoon and you'll see a lot of feels like numbers right around 100 especially south of San Antonio. As far as the setup for rain goes, well there is going to be some showers and storms across the state today, mainly across West Texas. The best chance is going to be Midland up to Lubbock and Amarillo, but uh, even around Del Rio we could see some storms this afternoon. Now here's the bad news. This forecast does not call for these storms to make it east towards San Antonio. So we stay dry here. It is going to be places like Rock Springs, Brackenville, Del Rio, and Eagle Pass that have the chance to get some of these storms a little bit later this afternoon. So let's look at the forecast here and we'll fast forward to 6 p.m. and we start to see some of those storms coming out of West Texas and Mexico and work their way towards Del Rio, perhaps Rock Springs, Eagle Pass. This is around 8 p.m. And then as we go towards 10 o'clock, still some out there, maybe still some of the hill country, but as they work east, they just fall apart and uh, rain again, not in our forecast here in San Antonio, unfortunately. So the, it stays dry. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast, 86 noon time. We start to see a lot more sun this afternoon and we're up to 95 by 4 p.m., 96 by 5 p.m. But keep in mind, it feels hotter than that. And then even into the evening hours, we're at 87, 8 p.m., 84 by 9 p.m. Extended forecast. We'll go 95 tomorrow, 96 Thursday, 95 on Friday, probably morning clouds next few mornings. And then on Saturday, there's a small chance just the way the pattern setting up for uh, a couple of uh, stray showers or storms. And of course, we've got the lunar eclipse coming up Sunday night into Monday, something that we should be able to see with mostly clear skies. But these temperatures across the board stay well above average, guys. A warm week. Very warm. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 918, about 80 degrees. And coming up next, we'll look at some of the trending stories on KSET.com right now. Northbound 35 at South Cross is still an absolute mess. We still have an accident report out there. SAPD on the scene diverting everybody uh, around that scene, which has been there for quite some time. If you're coming into downtown from the southwest side, know it is slow going just past military and past South Cross. Welcome back 922 this morning on KSAT.com. A uh, slamming event returns to the Alamo City and a local school district offering camping trips for free. Plus local bodies of water will soon be stocked with some largemouth bass. RJ Marcus joins us live in the studio with those stories trending on our website right now. Okay, Mark, glad you did the fist pump there yeah. because I'm going to need a little bit of explaining on this. I'm okay. always curious as how they stock these and the fisheries and how that kind of works out. I'm here so. to help. Yes, definitely. So we'll get to that story here in just a little bit. But first, some big news for local wrestling fans. Get set for some high-flying rope-to-rope action as the WWE returns to San Antonio this summer. Yeah, doing my wrestling voice. World Wrestling Entertainment announced that its flagship show, Monday Night Raw, will make a stop at the AT&T Center on July 11th. So that is, of course, a Monday night. Monday Night Raw makes sense. Fans mm -hmm. will see their favorite WWE superstars, including Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Big match there. Raw Women's Champion Bianca Blair, the Raw Tag Team Champions, plus Rey Mysterio, always a fan favorite here in South Texas, Damian Priest, Bobby Lashley, and so many more stars. Pre-sale tickets will be sold tomorrow through Thursday, so keep that in mind. And general tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. So always, San Antonio is a big, big wrestling community. I was going to say there's a ton of wrestling fans here. Yeah, yeah. Always uh, fun to see the at t Center packed with the WWE events. And I'm sure it'll be packed for that one as well. Yes, it will. Yeah. Feeling more like normal, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, guys. Okay, so camping, guys, always a cool summer event. We know it's pretty hot out there, but this is pretty cool. Seguin ISD is doing something fun for their families in the district. Check this out. Seguin ISD families in the Texas Outdoor Family Program can camp for free at Garner State Park from May 20th through the 22nd. So that's not this weekend, but next. Campsite costs, access to learner camping gear like tents, plus other camping-related activities will all be covered at no cost. 
Lantern stove fuel pots, fry pans, and utensils will also be loaned by the Outdoor Family Program. So you're going to get all hooked up there. Space is limited, and all families who plan to participate need to register. So make sure to check that out if you live up there or if your family is there in the Seguin ISD. Pretty fun stuff going on yeah, up there. Absolutely. Okay, guys, speaking of the great outdoors, Mark, this is where we need you here. The okay. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department will be stocking water bodies across the state with bass from this month between through July. So right. check this out. Pure Florida strain largemouth bass are expected to be stocked in more than 50 locations. Several San Antonio area water bodies are on the list of bass stocking locations, and that includes Canyon Lake and Choke Canyon Reservoir. The Parks and Wildlife Department says it can stock six to eight million fingerling bass across the state each year. And this is actually the first year that Texas Parks and Wildlife Inland Fisheries is able to stop share lunker descendants across the state. We have a full list there of those locations on ksat.com. Mark, Sherlunker, kind of explain a little bit of that to Okay, me. so those are those super-sized mm. bass. We did a story okay. on this last summer. There's those jump, and they are, uh, if you participate in the program, which you can find online, mm -hmm. you're loaning your giant bass to the state, and they breed them, and these are the offspring. These are super-sized wow. offspring, okay. and hopefully they'll grow into mega bass one day, too, yeah. for us all to catch and enjoy. Wow. They're targeting lakes all over, but we love that they're targeting Canyon and yeah. Choke yeah. Canyon yeah. as well. Close they think Choke Canyon is going to be a destination for bass fishermen for nice. decades to nice. come. Very cool. Well, I knew you were the guy with the answers when it came yes. to Yes. I got you. <laughs> I got you. You can check out that full story on KSAT.com. Thank you, buddy. Thank Thanks, you. guys. 925, about 80 degrees more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including the fallout that one family is facing now after having their young son run a marathon with them. What the parents are saying and why one attorney says this case is unique. Plus, the man who first blew the lid on Enron's fraudulent deal speaks with Stephanie Jimenez about why he came forward and what he hopes we learn from that scandal after the break. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide there, looking at I-35 at South Cross. Still problems, still a big holdup after that accident. We'll be right back. Time now is 929 and unfortunately don't have great news to report here off 35 at South Cross. We've been talking about this issue for several hours now. Let's get a wider look at TransGuide and show you not much has changed. You can see that traffic is still down to just one lane there at there at 35 at South Cross from the view at TransGuide. We are seeing multiple first responders that have been out there again for several hours since we reported this issue around 630 this morning, taking you right to the map. Let's go ahead and see how that traffic buildup is looking because we're seeing that it's impacting the northbound lanes at South Cross, so drivers may Maybe heading in from Lytle, you can experience a slowdown, so start looking for those different routes today. But let's get that wide look at the map because thankfully we aren't seeing much else around the map in the metro area. We do have another crash off Cesar Chavez that's not really causing too much concern, but the big issue is going to be there along 35 at South Cross. So you can see here that drive time from Lytle is still about 20 minutes, a little bit more than usual, but thankfully we're no longer in the red or yellow. Hopefully we'll see this wrap up before GMS 79 wraps up. But one last look here at 35 at South Cross. Traffic moving down to just one lane. Pretty slow, but we'll continue to watch it closely. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. It's been 20 years since thousands of people lost their jobs, their pensions, and their livelihoods after working for Enron or investing in the energy company. Now, after all these years, the man who first blew the lid on the Houston company's fraudulent deals is speaking out. We spoke with Stephanie Jimenez about why he came forward and what he hopes people will learn from that scandal. Lots of people were hurt. It still haunts James Timmons. Many of us recall the images of workers in tears leaving Enron's Houston headquarters. That was late 2001. Thousands lost their jobs and retirement savings. You go to Enron to have a safe uh, uh, future, but that's, <laughs> that's no longer there. It's the last thing James wanted to happen. For years, he worked for Enron as director of private equity. Any business unit worldwide which wanted to access that market had to come through me. So we had one voice out in the public in the institutional market. That was me. So I saw a lot of opportunities that Enron was pursuing. But it all came to a halt in 1999 when James noticed something. I saw too much potential fraud, self-dealing, self-enrichment at the expense of Enron shareholders. James says he tried warning senior managers at Enron, but when they disagreed, he walked away. I quit because I felt like 
The activities that were being conducted by a senior group of officers at Enron were potentially illegal. They were fraudulent. They were self-dealing, self-serving. But it wasn't until more than a year later that he anonymously came forward to the Wall Street Journal and told reporters what he knew. I did it to put it in the public market and hold those accountable who needed to be held accountable. Then began the avalanche. Investigations revealed that Enron's top executives made in the tens, some hundreds of millions of dollars while hiding the company's actual financial state. At the time, Enron filed for the largest corporate bankruptcy in history. The fraud cost shareholders more than $70 billion, and a number of Enron executives were convicted of fraud. You know, Enron was the favorite child of Houston. That was where the best and the brightest went to work. For almost 20 years, no one knew what James did. I felt so bad about everybody that lost so much. And for that reason, most of all, I didn't want to profit. I didn't want to come out and say I was the original whistleblower to the Wall Street Journal. He says he has no regrets. Now, James runs an equity firm in Houston and talks to business school students about his experience at Enron. There's a lesson for everyone, he says. It's easy to get lost. I remember <clears throat> a quote. Um, former U.S. Senator Alan Simpson made one time. Um, if you have integrity, like exactly, exactly. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. The consequences of what happened at Enron extended beyond its workers or shareholders. In Texas, the teacher's retirement system lost more than $35 million in Enron stock. The state's employees' retirement fund also lost tens of millions of dollars. James and Stephania had an extensive conversation about Enron. For the full interview, just scan this QR code. It'll take you right there. They also talked about how Enron affected all of us, financial markets, and, and why. What happened is still relevant today and taking a look outside with live cam. So 80 degrees, yeah, a little warm, but it's expected to get warmer later this afternoon. It's gonna get hot again. Thankfully, not as hot as it has been last couple days, but still hot nonetheless. Heat index is gonna be up somewhere near 100. If you haven't heard yet, we have a total lunar eclipse headed our way Sunday into Monday. We should be able to, to see this pretty well. And uh, this, is how it, this is how it works. The Earth is between the sun and the moon, and the Earth casts a shadow onto the moon, which it's always a pretty cool sight to see. And, of course, we have the solar eclipse coming up in two years, which is really exciting. So a lot going on. If you want to check it out, again, that is Sunday night. Here's the setup across the country. A sort of a unique pattern has taken shape here. We've got some really cool air up across the northwest, some really hot conditions across the plains, Texas stretching up towards the Great Lakes and then a low on the east coast that's producing some more cool weather over there. And as long as that sort of situation is in place, we're going to see hot weather, and that is the case again today. A lot of clouds this morning. Those clouds will break up, and we'll see uh, partly cloudy skies this afternoon. 86 noontime, we'll take it up to 95 by 4 p.m., and eventually close to 96 for a high today, mostly clear skies tonight. There will be a gusty southeasterly wind, so just keep that in mind. It'll be windy from time to time today. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Pretty similar setup. A few changes, though, by uh, late in the week and into the weekend. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Now to the big story nationally, a manhunt for an Alabama murder suspect and corrections officer ends with a dramatic crash and a fatal shooting after 11 days. ABC's Alex Perez shows the latest details in the case. This morning, Vicki White, the former Alabama corrections officer who went on the run with capital murder suspect Casey White, is dead after both were taken into custody. White immediately sent back to jail. The urgent 11-day nationwide manhunt now over. We got a dangerous man off the street today. He is never going to see the light of day again. The scene chaotic as U.S. Marshals zeroed in on the pair here in Evansville, Indiana, about 219 miles away from where they disappeared in Florence, Alabama. Their cover blown after a tip from a citizen who spotted them in a hotel. Authorities quickly responding, leading to a dramatic pursuit ending in a wreck. Clear any crash out still inside the vehicle. We could hear her on the line saying she had her finger on the trigger. Female is still armed. As they closed in, authorities say Vicki White shot herself. Casey White injured in the chase but expected to survive. 
we can't clarify that at this time until we speak to him. We know the vehicle that was recovered had a date of May the 3rd. We were lucky that we stumbled upon them today. Investigators were already looking into a tip. The two may have been in this pickup spotted at this Evansville car wash on or around May 3rd. It was just days earlier on April 29th when authorities say Vicki, a 17 year veteran of the Lauderdale Sheriff's Department, helped spring Casey out of jail, transporting him in the back of her patrol car before ditching it for this 2007 Ford Edge that will later be abandoned and found in Tennessee. The state of Alabama had earlier filed criminal charges against Vicki for purchasing that used car under a fake name, second degree forgery and identity theft. If you're a sworn officer, you've taken an oath to follow the law and to protect people. And when you violate that oath by breaking the law and actually helping a violent person escape into society, you've broken all the rules that you basically were hired to protect. Vicki and Casey White, who are not related, are said to have developed a romantic relationship that started with Casey was an inmate at the Lauderdale County Detention Center in 2020. Overnight, Casey's former defense attorney speaking with ABC News. Casey is not a uh, big time forward thinking when it comes to his crimes or his actions. This was thought out thoroughly, the escape, the changing of vehicles multiple times. And my assumption is almost all of that had to offend Vicki White. Meanwhile, authorities in Alabama questioning how one of their own fellow members of law enforcement turned on them. She has been an exemplary employee. And what in the world provoked her or prompted her to pull a stunt like this? I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever know. And authorities have not said why the pair ended up here in Evansville or if they have ties to the area. Investigators now working to figure out what they did over the course of the last 10 days. Alex Perez, ABC News, Evansville, Indiana. And another story that is getting national attention, a Kentucky family that ran a marathon with their six-year-old son defending their decision after getting a visit from Child Protective Services. ABC's Errol Rochef has the newest developments. This morning, new fallout for two Kentucky parents. Child Protective Services now investigating complaints after their six-year-old son ran a marathon alongside them. Yeah. Rainier Crawford's dad, Ben, posting this photo on social media Saturday, writing, Yesterday, Child Protective Services arrived at our house unannounced and interviewed our children, parents, and grandmother. This is a scary process because their answers determine the agency's legal right to take away the kids. The family's initial post on May 1st, revealing Rainier had run the 26.2 mile flying pig race, sparking a nationwide social media outcry. Hundreds, including professional runners, weighing in, some critics accusing the parents of child abuse. CPS confirming they visited the family. This case is unique because the family themselves posted this all over social media. And once there's an outcry and people make a report, CPS is obligated to do an investigation. Rainier's parents taking to Facebook to refute the claims. Yeah, so the real stuff that we got accused of was dragging Rainier, like physically dragging him on the marathon course after mile 13. If you guys have seen our finish line picture, we all held hands for like the last probably like 0.2, 0.3 mile. We talked about it ahead of time, like that's what we're going to do. The parents of six adamant it was Rainier's choice to run. And it's just so weird because these people that are making these phone calls, they don't have any proof. I don't know, like, if I should be angry. Like, like I, I like to um, believe that people are doing the best that they can. Like, they're not trying to ruin our life or, like, you know, they probably, like, are le legit afraid for our kids. But also, it's like, where's the line? And they're standing by their decision to let him. I feel like we're doing what we feel passionate about. It would be kind of tragic to stop all of that. And that was Ariel Rochef reporting. 940, about 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Coming up after the break, a behind-the-scenes look at a local private school's domino topple that raised money for a school in Haiti. Welcome back. 944. It's a tradition spanning almost two decades. St. George Episcopal in Castle Hills celebrating their 17th annual Chain of Love Domino Topple to raise money for their sister school in Haiti. 
every domino represents a dollar donated, and this year they raised $25,631. Photojournalist Tim Stewart takes us behind the scenes of this massive undertaking and shows us how this event is all about middle schoolers learning patience, resilience, while being compassionate and giving. This is our 17th chain of love. 17 years of building this, this chain of love to help others. Every single domino represents like one dollar and uh, we have many teams like the fundraising team, the prep team, the construction team. Yeah, we have a sister school in Haiti. Every dollar does a lot for them. It really does make a difference. All of this, I think pays for like six teacher salaries in Haiti. I think that it builds a character of helping others and helping others as a community. It's not just about what we receive, but what we give. And so I really think that that's the lesson we're teaching our kids. You should be doing as much work for other people as you can instead of for yourself. I think it also teaches everyone to learn how to just relax, rebuild, it's okay. It can be hard to like place every single domino because it can topple over at any moment. It's kind of stressful. This is tough, this is hard. Um, and they learn that, that they can pick themselves back up and their design can fall over in the 11th hour, you know, when the stakes are high, they have to brush it off and they keep going. That's resilience and that's stick, sticking to it and, and finishing their job. The whole school's in here and we haven't been able to do that since a while because of COVID. <laughs> I think everybody should help other people who don't have as much. What a fun day at St. George Episcopal. Yeah, super cool. And a special thank you to photojournalist Tim Stewart for putting that together for us. All right, Justin joins us now. We already know it's going to be a long, hot summer. Uh, our friend Jeremy, who we used to work here at KSAT, is a cattle rancher. He posted yeah. yesterday on a Facebook page that by his estimate, we would need 17 inches of rain over the next three months yep. just to catch up to normal. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds about right. We we need a ton of rain very quickly, and, and I will say we know that can happen here too. We yes, can it get, can. So we can get rain, and it uh, comes down really the quickly, and we have flooding issues. That is not in the forecast, and, and I want to show you sort of a projection. Now we take these with a grain of salt; they give us a general idea. But this is the projection six to ten days out. So we're talking May fifteenth, May sixteenth, excuse me, through May twentieth, and this is. Uh, the Climate Prediction Center, and this is what they're thinking as far as temperatures. This is going to be above average. This uh, red color, any red color you see here, red orange, that means they're forecasting above average temperatures. Notice all of Texas is within that, uh, mainly all of the southern half of the country. And then when we're talking precipitation, it has us below average. And I, I know this comes as no surprise, but as we look down the line, We've got to prepare for more drought and more heat. That's just that's just how this is shaping up to be. And of course, the big question we get here in the weather department is this mean that the summer is going to be this way? Not necessarily. Just because we have a hot May doesn't mean we're going to see a hot June and July. But I will tell you that it is a La Nina year, which would lend itself to drier, warmer conditions. So it's entirely possible, but there's not always a connection there. We just know that over the next couple of weeks, bottom line, heat, and probably not that much in the way of rain. As we look outside for you right now, mostly cloudy, 80 degrees at the airport, 83 cents and 81 Kelly, 79 at Randolph. We've got Southeast Julia winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Air temperature is 80 degrees here in town, but it feels like 84. There's a ton of humidity at the moment. Uh, 78 in Bovardi, but it feels like 80. Canyon Lake, a little bit of a heat index there. Same story in Seguin and New Braunfels. So it's already uh, feeling warmer than that air temperature and dew points will fall off a little bit today, but not enough, not enough to where we won't have a heat index in the afternoon. So when you start getting temperatures in the mid nineties and you have dew points in the mid sixties, that translates to heat indices somewhere around 100. So this is the projected heat index at noontime 93. That's what it will feel like. Again, this is not the air temperature, but the feels like, and that'll be the case around four or five o'clock as well heat index values somewhere around 100 degrees. And that's in that zone where if you are gonna be outside for any length of time, you gotta be careful. Uh, there's the big picture and there is uh, very little rain across the state other than a few showers across Northeast Texas. We have that morning overcast that's been working through 
those clouds will break up and we are forecasting sun this afternoon. There is a risk for storms though later today, and I think you'll see the radar get more active out across West Texas, places like Lubbock, Wichita Falls, Midland, even down to Del Rio. Dry line is out there. We have some energy coming in from the south, and that should be enough to spark off some isolated severe storms. I, I do think there could be a couple of strong storms with hail and gusty winds being the main threats. But what you'll notice here is the risk for severe weather is well west of San Antonio, and I don't think any of these storms hold together and move in our direction. So we stay dry here. But if you're all watching us from Rock Springs and Del Rio Eagle Pass, there's potential for storms today around, say, 6 o'clock through about midnight. We can see some of these storms developing, and this shows a storm there around Del Rio around 10 o'clock. These aren't going to show specific locations, but it gives you the general idea that that possibility is there, and then it all dies down before it makes any headway off to the east. Here's our KSAT 12 hour forecast, 86 noon time. We should be up around 95, 96 for a high temperature today, partly cloudy and gusty winds this afternoon. Then we're down into the 80s this evening, 87, 8 o'clock, 84 by 9 p.m. Extended forecast, 95 tomorrow, 96 Thursday, 95 Friday. Pretty similar days here. We lose some of those morning clouds perhaps as we head into the weekend, but there's a chance for a few showers coming up on Saturday. It's a shower or storm. It's a very small chance. Then we talked about that lunar eclipse happening Sunday into Monday. We'll watch out for it. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 951, about 80 degrees. And stay with us. After the break, we're going to talk about the top 10 cities where Americans moved to last year. Was San Antonio one of them? Okay, we are back 955 and we are taking a look at 35 at South Cross. Unfortunately, we have not seen much progress here. Traffic has been down to one lane for quite a while now. Keep in mind, we reported this crash around 630 this morning and crews have been out there for quite some time. Of course, we are going to work to continue to monitor the situation, but just as a reminder to drivers, make sure to move over, slow down. You can see that lane is just keeping things pretty steady for traffic, but we're going to watch it closely, Justin. Thanks, sir. It is uh, 82 degrees outside right now. We'll be on our way up to 96 this afternoon. A few storms out west. We'll be watching for a few severe storms this evening, but not here in San Antonio. We're talking Del Rio on the Rio Grande and then otherwise heat, humidity, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you drive around San Antonio any given day, you'll notice a ton of out of town plates and apparently they're not all tourists. There are new friends and neighbors. Yeah, uh, we have tons a, of folks moving here. A new list uh, to share with you. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are moving and Americans are flocking to these 10 cities and none of them include uh, cities in New York or California. There's yeah. the list right there. All right. Oh. So here's the top 10 list. According mm -hmm. to Penske, one of the rental companies, top 10 moving destinations. So number one is Houston. Uh, they're Las Vegas, number two, number three, Phoenix. Charlotte, which hasn't ranked in the top 10 since 2017. And then we go to Denver, and then here we are at number six. San Dallas, Antonio. right behind us at number seven. Mm -hmm. And then Orlando, Florida, eight. Austin, number nine. And number 10 is Chicago, and it hasn't ranked in the top 10 since 2015. And they said this isn't a pandemic blip. Believe it or not, overall, people have moved, but they're, they're typically staying home. And they said that's not a pandemic blip. The rate has either declined or held steady every year for the past five years. And during that time, most Americans who've moved have stayed in their city or state with relatively few people crossing state lines. But this is the exception, and not to be surprised at all that so many Texas cities yeah. are on the list. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome, friends, right? I that in my Austin friends' faces. Go Alamo City. Yeah, all right. We beat them there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.